Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is set relative rotation? Let's go ahead and look at our node. Our node's pretty simple. It's a setter, which means these values we type in will be the new values. It's going to set the rotation, which means we're going to take in a rotator or the new rotation value. And it's going to be relative to something. So in this case, it's relative to its parent. And we're going to put in a target of a scene component. A scene component is going to be any component on your blueprint that inherits from scene component or is a scene component itself. The easiest way of knowing is if it has a transform, in this case it has a transform, then it is inherited from a scene component, component, and we can put it in as an input. In this case it's going to be my door. If we look at my example, I have a door frame in green and a door in red. Let's go ahead and plug in our door. Let's split our rotator and we're going to plug this into our Z. I only want this to rotate on the Z using a timeline. If we run this, we will find our door opens and then closes and repeats because I have it set to a timeline and it's repeating back on itself. The nice thing about this is because it's relative, it doesn't care where the parent is or where it looks like or anything about the parent. It just knows it needs to rotate based on where it's at to the numbers we've told it. So if we look at our door, here's our settings for our door in the world. We have no rotation and we have this location. If we look, sorry, door frame, technically our entire thing is this setting. If we look at our door itself right here, you'll notice here's its location in the world relative to its parent and here's our new rotation relative to our parent. So if we were to take this, for example, the entire thing and rotate the entire thing. Let's rotate the entire thing 90 degrees. Our door still opens. If we do it 180 degrees, our door still opens. We could do it 145 and our door is still going to open. And it's going to open properly relative to the parent, relative to our door frame, which we're parented to, as you can see here. And that's why the relative nodes are fantastic. It keeps things in the correct space in the world because we don't want our door to only open forward from where our player's at. We were to stop this and hit play. If we were to set our location in the world, not our location, our rotation in the world, and then we rotated our frame, obviously our door is going to be wrong. But since we're doing it relatively, it's always going to be correct. And that's what's nice about it. In terms of how it works, we're going to take in our scene component. In this case, it's our door. It's going to be relative to our parent. In this case, our door is a child of the door frame going to take in that rotator and then we have sweeping and teleporting. Now by default this is actually what the node is going to look like. We're not going to see sweeping and teleporting unless we open up the advanced settings and then that gives us our hit result. Sweeping and teleporting are the same as any other setter node. If sweeping is turned on and we attempt to rotate it's going to stop the rotation. So let's turn this back on. Let's turn on sweeping. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's move our character right here and it's going to go ahead and it's going to go through the character. Now it's going through the character because we don't have the proper collision channels turned on. And if we turn on the proper collision channels, so we're going to move the scene component. So let's find our door and we don't have this set up properly because of block all dynamic because of collision. If we had the collision turned on properly, basically it's going to attempt to do the rotation. It's going to hit our character and it would stop it. Now, if we look at this node here, we can see currently not supported for rotation. This is a hit and miss. As of version 4.14, this doesn't work. However, in later versions, it may work. So if it does work, then what will happen is our player will basically stop the door. The door will fail on its rotation, but it will continue trying. And it will continue trying if we tell it to continue moving, in my case, until it can successfully rotate. It basically allows you to give collision and overlapping and things like that when you're setting the rotation. Now this says it's currently not supported, but it may change in the future. And if it does, just pay attention and it may work. 
Teleport is used for physics collisions. For example, we have hair, or we have the arms of an octopus, or we have a chain, for example, from a wallet. And when we're rotating, if we rotate in a large amount, it may cause the physics to go crazy. So if you have teleport enabled, it pauses the physics basically while it is moving. And then once it's done, it's going to unpause it. So keep that in mind. Check teleport if you're going to do a dramatic change to the rotation. If not, just keep it as is. And that's pretty much it. That's our set relative rotation node. It's useful when you need to set something for the rotation relative to the parent so that way it, you don't have to worry about it in world space. And as you can see in our example, it works really well. Here's our door. We always want it opening in that direction and closing in that direction. And we don't care where the door is in the world or the rotation of the door itself. And by door, I mean the frame and the entire blueprint. We just want our actual swinging part of the door to work properly by setting the rotation. That is it. That's going to wrap up our set relative rotation node.